My name is Justin Lovett. I'm a documentary filmmaker here in Seoul, South Korea. And my wife is Cohen Lee. She's a project manager and creative design consultant, currently doing her master's in creative leadership. I'm going to kind of start from the beginning. This is how I got my clients when I first started in documentary filmmaking and how I get my clients now. So first, in the beginning, I know a lot of people say don't work for free, but I did. I worked for free a lot. It's a really good way to practice, and it's a really good way to get a couple videos in your portfolio, because people aren't gonna pay you right away, especially like if you're not that good, which I wasn't. So I think it's a time and place when you should do free work and don't and not do free work. Now, I don't th really that much. I do definitely give discounts though, especially working with nonprofits. And sometimes I do actually still work for free, but it's, it has to be something I really want to do. Then I work for free, yeah. But yeah, I shot when I was in college. It was like friends, family, anything. I mean, it was also, I just wanted to make videos and tell stories, so I just shot stuff. But as soon as you can, get people to pay you. It's still, it's not gonna be a lot. Like in the beginning, I think I would shoot, I shot a wedding for like $300 for a whole day of shooting and for editing. The main thing in the beginning is you want to build your portfolio and you need to have a place to be able to show that to people easily. So that means making a website as well, or maybe your YouTube channel. I went to North Korea and did a little mini doc series and it got quite a few views on YouTube at the time, but those were the videos I showed people in the beginning. It was just on my YouTube channel. I was like, hey, I did this little mini series and it had a bunch of views. So people I think took it a little bit more seriously. Um, but that's what I showed people in the beginning to start getting jobs and it worked. And now still I think I do show my YouTube channel sometimes, but mainly it's my website. As soon as you can, start building a website. Uh, you're gonna have to look for work in the beginning as well. So I use Story Hunter a few times in the beginning when I was in the States. And that's where I got one of the, my first shoots with a bigger news agency. I think it was MSNBC. They needed a cameraman the next day. And I was the only one, I guess, available on Story Hunter in Milwaukee and was in Madison. But that was the first time I shot with like a bigger company. It was crazy actually because I, I mean I was just shooting, I mean I had a Canon 60 I think. Yeah first time shooting with a journalist and just way bigger budget. I didn't even know I could get paid that much at the time. I think they paid me like I think in total it was like $1,800 or something to days and they put me up like in a five-star hotel for two nights which was all covered and yeah it was my first experience being like oh people have money people are gonna pay for stories people are gonna pay you to shoot and it's expensive stories are expensive especially if you need them done the next day stories are the way you shape culture stories are the way that you influence people they are very expensive so that's when I started to realize like okay yeah people can pay you more yeah that was an eye-opening experience for me um, so I guess what to take from there like sometimes you just have what do people say where opportunity meets where opportunity meets action but basically like you have the opportunity and you need to take it you take it immediately and it's luck too you, you're just lucky you get a good opportunity and you take it and you do your best that you possibly can in the moment Okay, so keep your eyes open and use Story Hunter or other online. I found Story Hunter was the best. And the thing that's nice about Story Hunter is once you start working with clients, they'll give you reviews. And if they give you good reviews, more people want to work with you. And Story Hunter does that. They can get up five stars and they can leave a comment. The other good thing about being on Story Hunter is I think some people now that I work with, they go to Story Hunter first, read the reviews, and then contact me separately. Sorry, Story Hunter. So make sure you are really nice to people when you work with them and treat them with respect and work hard and do a good job. Don't be late. <laughs> Then also you should keep updating your website. When you work with a new brand, put that brand on your website. People associate your brand, who you are, with the brands that you work with. So the bigger brands you get, the more serious people are gonna take you. But definitely if, if you have worked with some big brands, put those on your website. Don't be ashamed to do it. So say you do have Story Hunter and you do have a website, try to have a few more areas where you're present online. Maybe it's using Adobe Portfolio, or maybe it's posting your videos on Facebook, letting people know that you just did a documentary with so on and so someone. Well, it's just useful to keep a presence online so that people know that you're making videos, you're still doing it, you're still getting hired by other people, and this is your profession. When I first got to Korea two years ago, I cold called two production houses here that I just looked up online that had English websites, or I emailed them. Both of them responded back. One of them I had a copy with, got one gig that got canceled. The other one I started working with because I met one of the guys that also worked as a freelancer there. We got a barbecue together first and some drinks, 
and then he recommended me to that person and then I started working with them. So you, yeah, you just really never know, but I feel like the big thing is reach out, have fun, be nice, and uh, do a good job. But the, the first part is reach out to production houses or other people you know who are in, do, in the industry. There was another production company here I did reach out to. I even went to their, they invited me to their office. It seemed like maybe there was gonna be some work there, but in the end, they haven't contacted me, so I don't know. Or I'm getting referrals from other friends of mine who are freelancing here and just don't have time to pick up that work. So I kind of pick up their scraps, if that makes sense. I would say try to say yes as often as possible. If someone's asking you to do it and it's above what you know how to do, still say yes and find a way to do it. I remember one shoot I was on, I, it was the first time using an FS7 again. I, I'd used it in school, but I hadn't shot on it. I was just shooting on DSLRs, but they wanted me to shoot on an FS7. So I rented the FS7 one, I paid for it for an extra day to use it for the day just so I could get familiar with it. I did the shoot and and nobody thought otherwise. Nobody realized that I hadn't used an FSN in a long time. But make sure, yeah, sometimes you have to pay a little extra money to take get that bigger shoot. Or maybe it's, maybe you're really branching out and it's like now you have to get a grip truck. Find a friend who knows a grip truck. Those guys are professionals and they're gonna know how to uh, help you light the set. Once you game paid for these projects, you're working as a team. People are gonna to want to work together. They're gonna to want to uh, lean on each other. So say yes as much as you can, unless you don't have time or the budget really is too low. Take risks. This is the kind of story I just told before, but yeah. Some shoots I've taken, I really surprised. I even got it done because I really felt way over my head. It worked out in the end. If you can find a good team to work with, it will, it will work out. If your work is slowed down, I would email again, call again, ask people, you know, do you have any gigs out there or do you know anyone that needs videos shot? Sometimes people just need a reminder, <laughs> that's all. And what are they gonna say, no? If they say no, that's fine. But sometimes it's worth it just to go out and ask a few other people or let someone know like, hey, I kinda need some extra work. Maybe they didn't really care who they're asking as a cameraman, but now they're gonna ask you because they know, oh, you need a little bit more. Here's, this isn't necessarily like how to find clients, but I would say don't expect like if a client's like, oh, you know, we're gonna hire you now and can you do it for this rate because we're gonna work with you again, like you're gonna be our guy to work with, I don't believe them. <laughs> well, there's quite a few I worked with again, but it's never trust it. Never trust that you're gonna work with another client again, like, oh, and they're now my client. They can work with whoever they want to. You know, but I would say the big thing, don't don't give discounts and stuff like that because they're like, oh, now we're gonna just work with you. It's not true at all. These businesses are to, like, they're here to make money. They're not a charity. So if they can get a better deal somewhere else, they're gonna go with that most likely. And then be a, just try to be a nice person, an other oriented person when you care about the team that you're working with. Don't try to use, just be a nice person basically when you're on set, when you're working with people, even when you're not working with people. Right. Be other oriented as much as you can. I mean, we're all selfish people, but I would say it really does help a lot. Like I rehire people because I like to work with them. Skill can be learned, but someone's character, you know, that's who you're stuck with throughout the whole day. Just, you know, try to be someone that, I mean, I know I'm not a nice, like there's a lot of times I'm not a nice person and I'm not, people don't like being around me. But as much as I can be, I try to be conscious of being nice and encouraging on set. This is a book I'm reading right now. It's called The 21 Dispensable Qualities of a Leader. You don't have to, I don't think it's, you don't have to be someone that wants to be a leader. I don't even see myself as a leader, but my dad gave me this book. It's just a nice book to kind of help you reflect on your life a little bit and where you're going and what, you know, who are you trying to be? So if anyone's made it this far in the video and you want this book, the first person to comment, I'll send you a copy. It's a really good book, I really like it a lot. Uh, and they're really short chapters, like three page chapters, each one each one is like a little lesson. And yeah, I really like it actually. I feel like one, I'm just gonna read one thing here, which I feel like was kind of like quite insightful. So this is about charisma. I think a lot of times people see charisma as like an aura that's around you. Like this like spiritual thing or that only some people have and some people don't. But this guy, Dan Ryland, he says, how can you have charisma? Be more concerned about making others feel good about themselves than you are making them feel good about you. You know, a lot of times we can go in a circle and be like, oh, I hope people like me. What can I do so that people like me? But that's really not what's important. And what's important is how do they feel about themselves? You wanna make the people you're with closest to you feel good about themselves. And I really feel like it's an important thing when you're working with other people is how do you be 
essentially encouraging to other people. The last tip here would be learn how to write professional emails. Learn how to write a professional budget. Learn how to write a professional quote. I really didn't know how to do that when I first started out. Who I learned all that from was from Cohen, my wife. She is like the god of writing professional emails and quotes and budgets and invoices. So I learned so much from her. I really actually changed my career a lot and, and how my clients viewed me. I still have Cohen read a lot of my emails before I send them out. Thankfully, I've learned a lot from her already, so I can write some emails by myself, <laughs> believe it or not. But uh, I always have her look over my budgets, my quotes, my invoices, just because it's so helpful to have a single pair of eyes on that. But that's, that's really an important part if you are doing documentary filmmaking as a business. All right, that's it. I'm sure there's plenty more tips and tricks to get clients. This is just the way I do it. If you know other ways to get clients, write them in the comments, stories of how it's worked for you. I mean, I'd love to hear them because this is still something I, I'm still trying to continue to pursue and grow as well. All right, so please like this video, subscribe to us, ring the bell, and I think that's about it.